What are the realities and challenges in Western and Central African region regarding climate change induced migration? Thank you for this question. In West Africa, uh, we have climate extreme events like floods, dry spells, and also some violent winds. As you may know, in West Africa, people living in the rural area have their economy based on agriculture and also breeding, basically livestock rising. And uh, these kind of climate extreme events put them in the, a very, very you know, challenging situation. They are living a kind of poverty trap. So they have little capital to invest in agriculture and uh, they have low labor and land productivity, which lead to yield gaps and also to low income. So they are living a kind of vicious circle and uh, we need someone to break this vicious circle. Otherwise, the main strategy they are using to escape from that poverty trap is migration. So they used to migrate. Migration here is not like a kind of positive adaptation strategy, but it's a kind of maladaptive strategy. And also, another reality is that in the region, people are not well trained you know, they lack also information and then they lack knowledge. And also we have a lack of infrastructure. So there is a lot of people living um, in a bad condition without road, without those what we call, I mean, some climate services so that they can adapt, you can call it a kind of maladaptive, you know, uh, strategy because they used to come to the town and they don't find a nice job because they are looking for job for better living condition. And uh, another issue, another reality is also the population growth. We have a lot of young people coming in and without that knowledge, without training, without infrastructure, I mean it's huge and climate change is threatening their livelihood, their food security and their life. How do you see the European Union's role regarding climate change and youth migration? The European Union has a very key role to play because first of all, you know that uh, the climate change issue are coming from Europe, you know, and from US, if I may say, because in West Africa, we don't have a lot of companies emitting these green gas houses. So, and, um, but what we experience in West Africa are the impact so I think that the Union European must maybe play a key role in that we call maybe the win-win situation. Because if you see, uh, during you know, these COPs they have been implementing, I can you, you can remember that, I mean, the Paris Agreement said that um, European Union must implement what we call a kind of clean development and then that uh, Union European countries must develop this technology to be transferred to I mean West African country or to the North African country so that we can create a kind of win-win situation is not I mean a reality per se on the ground because the technology European Union you know uh, think uh, about to transfer to, I mean, these African countries might not be easy because if you see the designing of the agreement is very simple, but the way we have to implement the technology so that we have a win-win situation is very complex because uh, we cannot transfer a source of technology in Africa without taking into account the indigenous knowledge, how people will use that kind of technology. That's first. I mean, second, um, in Europe, for instance, um, we have scientific infrastructure we don't have in the northern part, in Africa, basically. So we have a very huge gap. Union European may need maybe to, I mean, to, to handle during the discussion, during the negotiation. And what also we need to do is also to try, I mean, to work on the caps also of the knowledge, because we have knowledge cap. If we take the scientists from European Union and the scientists from Africa, 
we don't have the same background and also the same infrastructure to do research. If you take uh, uh, like research on climate change, how we predict the climate in Africa, we usually use, I mean, global models built by European, built by scientists from Europe. And uh, in Africa, we use, I mean, the same models, you know, to predict African climate. That's very, very challenging situation because even if you need people in West Africa to implement some adaptation strategy, we need to know what happened on the ground. But if you don't have data, if you don't have good models to predict what's happening in West Africa, it will be very difficult to implement a right adaptation strategy so that people can cope with. And finally, I think that Europe can play a role in climate justice and equity. Because since, I mean, Africa is, uh, I mean, not playing a role on uh, maybe climate change, um, I think that we need a climate justice, like uh, people who are just maybe emitting more gases must also pay. Like in economics, we talk about the principle of the polio payer, but we may think also about how we can manage it because the mechanism of that credit carbon maybe will take uh, some company far away, you know, what we are thinking to do together. But still, Africans also have something to do, as we cannot also account only, you know, on Union European, you know, give funds, you know, to raise some funds. We can also try in Africa to raise funds by developing, you know, some policy, by implementing some policy who can attract people to pay more taxes so that we can develop, you know, some actions in West Africa so that people can cope with climate change generally in West Africa. What message would you like the people to take home from this conference? Oh, the message will be that uh, the more we change our behaviour and our consumption pattern, the more we engage all stakeholders and end users in every country in the world. The more we involve people, we engage people at the beginning of our action, our project, our program, the more we maintain people in their zone and the more we help them adapt to climate change and use now migration like a, a volunteer, like a desired solution, but not a forced one. Thank you so much for your time and uh, for this interview. Thank you, it's all my pleasure.